Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at Jack Daniels' refreshingly nice team of attorneys. And just before we get started, I will say that this video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. You can go to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash brain food and get a month of The Great Courses Plus for free. Generally speaking, attorneys, and particularly high-priced litigators, are not known for being nice or polite in their interactions with those on the opposite side of the table of their clients. Rather, the stereotype, not without basis, is of a profession filled with aggressive and sometimes even nasty people who will stop at nothing to see their clients prevail. It's their job, after all. On that note, although unpleasant, this latter quality can be helpful, particularly when a client is faced with a serious or existential problem. Consider, for example, when Hollywood attorney Marty Singer, in representing Scarlett Johansson in her quest to have hacked nude photos of herself removed from various websites, threatens, if you fail to comply, you will be acting at your own peril. Please govern yourselves accordingly. I'm sure in this situation, Johansson was glad to have a pit bull in her corner, as said sites would likely have been slow to respond to less litigious letters if they bothered to respond at all. Of course, once the dragon is unchained, it can be difficult to control, and this may explain why most cease and desist letters are unnecessarily harsh. Given this rather tense environment, it is noteworthy when an attorney takes a deep breath, considers the actual intent of the underlying act and its effect on her client, and and takes a more reasoned approach. Now enter Jack Daniels' refreshing legal team. In 2012, Louisville, Kentucky author Patrick Wensink published Broken Piano for President, a book that's cover bore a striking resemblance to the Jack Daniels label, the latter of which is protected by trademark. Although a trademark may seem like a small thing to get worked up about, consider that Jack Daniels' brand is worth a loan in excess of $5 billion, and a trademark undefended could well soon end up not a trademark at all. So when someone infringes on its trademark, clearly the company has a keen interest to protect their rights to it. And yet, when it came to tell Mr. Wensink to cease and desist, Jack Daniels' attorney, Christy Sussman, took a decidedly different approach than most of her compatriots. After introductions, beginning the meat of the letter with, We are certainly flattered by your affection for the brand, Miss Sussman then politely outlined the company's position. We also have to be diligent to ensure that the Jack Daniels trademarks are used correctly, and if we allow uses like this one, we run the very real risk that our trademark will be weakened. Displaying a remarkable degree of tact and a gift for persuasion, Miss Sussman continued, As a fan of the brands, I'm sure that is not something you intended or would want to see happen. Ending as reasonably as she began, Miss Sussman offered Mr. Wensink a couple of options for rectifying the problem, noting, Because you are a Louisville neighbor and a fan of the brand, we simply request that you change the cover design when the book is reprinted. If you would be willing to change the design sooner than that, we would be willing to contribute a reasonable amount towards the cost of doing so. How nice is that? In a subsequent interview, Jack Daniels's senior trademark counsel, David Gooder, explained their approach with Mr. Wesnick. We thought, is the author really trying to take advantage of Jack Daniels to make money? Probably not. We've used this general approach when we see a situation that warrants our response. Whenever we've taken this tone, we almost always get a very favorable reaction back. It solves the problem faster. As to whether they're always so polite, he responded, We don't always send letters like this. We get so many infringement situations a year, and we look at each of them separately. We don't have a standard approach to them. We just do what we think is fair. He also noted that they are occasionally forced to escalate matters to more typical cease and desist verbiage. You have to be prepared to ramp things up if the subjects ignore you. But our first approach in most cases is a fairly polite letter. And now for a bonus fact. If you're wondering how lawyers come up with the actual text of infringement letters, in 2012, the aforementioned famed entertainment lawyer Marty Singer explained the elements of an effective cease and desist letter as follows. Number one, cite the law to make them recognize their legal exposure. Number two, expect the letter will leak, so craft the letter also with the public in mind. Number three, use the correct language, which is particularly important for defamation cases with famous people who must show either actual malice or reckless disregard for the truth. Number four, explain the problem and don't rely on generalities, but identify why they should have known it was false. 
Number 5. Brevity counts. If you can't say it in two pages, you need to rethink it. So those of you who watch this channel will know that The Great Courses Plus has been a sponsor here before and it is my pleasure to welcome them back. If you really like the content on this channel, you know, varied educational content, then you are going to love The Great Courses Plus and it's one of the reasons that I was excited to see them come back because I think that our content matches so well with theirs. But if you're really looking to go deep on a topic, then you should definitely go to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash brain food. You'll get a month of The Great Courses Plus totally for free and there it's like there's a whole load of courses and you can take them all and for that month it's all completely free and basically there's just this huge range of topics. I talked previously about I think it was baking all the way to the Higgs boson and I was looking around for some new stuff and like watching some stuff myself and I tried to come up with like an interesting way to show the diversity of the courses and to do that they have courses on understanding gravity but also on understanding Japan. So I hope you can see like why I think, and I think the video, the, the sponsorship that we did previously got a really good reception from you guys, and that's because, uh, you know, I feel this channel really matches up well with The Great Courses Plus. So I would love it if you went over to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash brain food. You can get a month totally for free on us, and that also helps support us and support this channel so we can keep bringing you fantastic content every single day. So again, just head over to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash brain food to get a month of The Great Courses Plus on us. And thank you guys for watching.